What's up everybody, Serenity here and today I'm bringing you my Earford base guide. So let's get into it. Alright, so I'll start off with the drone spots. Here's a pretty hard spot to get to because, you know, you're going to be right in the middle of the enemy's defense and so they'll see you most of the time. But if you try and gamble it, it's a great spot. You have a big advantage if you get there. And on the flag, this is a high risk, high reward kind of thing. You have amazing vision, but you have a lot more chances of getting spotted. Here is a very important spot for the A room because most of the time when the enemy spawns in the basement, you're going to attack the A room. And so, yeah. Yeah, this spot is really hard to see for the enemies because they don't really look for that kind of height when searching for drones. There's another spot at the other corner of the room which is a lot more useful because from there you can see the two most popular spots that defenders like to camp from. And so having that drone before you even enter will allow you to push even quicker. And the cool thing about the spots in A room is that you're most likely going to plant the bomb there and so the defenders will try and take it back while you're outside. And at that point you won't have any vision inside the room. And so having a drone there ready to be used by a dead player can make a huge difference in the outcome of the round. Here's a very interesting spot for ladder room and so if your team plans on pushing the ladder room you'll be able to have extra information and if you plan on playing standard by pushing the A site this spot right here will allow a dead player to tell you if there's anyone in the door frame. Also you can always jump on those little ledges and sometimes you can get in really good spots that most players think are impossible to get to. Here's a spot that takes a long time to get to but it's one of the most flexible spot because it's going to help you no matter what your plan is and so if you're playing in a casual game where you don't really have a plan this spot is the best one i mean just look at this you can see the whole basement a site b site the locker room and the stairs you can also jump there to have a better vision on the locker room and the b room you can even jump on those pipes if you wish to Here is a well-known spot, and it can be really useful if you planted the bomb and the roamers are coming back to defuse it. Here is a not so well-known spot, and it can be really useful because you can see the entirety of the first floor's hallway, which will be constantly used by enemy roamers. And if Ubisoft considers the first way that I got there a glitch, here's another way you can get there, and so you'll be able to get there even if they patch it. And this one, I'm not exactly sure if Ubisoft will fix it, but yeah, you can get on the other side of the steel beam, giving you good visions to the room at the north of the building, and also the main entrance. Here's a very important spot that most people don't use, and so at the beginning of the round, the enemies will see the red lights on your drone, but if you pull back like this and you wait until the very last second of the preparation phase and then go up, you should be able to stay there. Here's another easy spot to get to, and it has a lot of potential if the enemy spawns in the bedroom. And there is a way to get on the other side of that steel beam, you just have to jump right here, and then then jump on this little ledge, which is pretty hard to do, but if you do get there you have great vision. Here's another spot in the bedroom. It is extremely hard to get there, but if you see an opportunity, take it, because the information you can get from there will almost certainly give you the win. That is, if you have good communication. Oh, and if you do get there, stop moving, because your drone will make a lot of noise and you don't want to get spotted. Unfortunately, on the third floor, there are no really crazy spots, and so you'll have to do most of your scouting in the action phase. I mean, those spots are cool and all, they're just really popular, and so the defenders won't be surprised to see you there. This spot is really hard to get to and because it's a dark area, you have to look away until the last second of the preparation phase and then you turn around to make sure no one sees the red lights on your drone. Alright, let's talk about attacking. Here is a very simple two-step strategy that's easy to execute and that's very effective. The first step is to destroy this wall with thermite and thatcher and the top of these two walls with ash. The second step is to use drones and stun grenades to take the A site. It's pretty easy if you use two very aggressive operators like Fuse, Blitz, Twitch, etc. Once that is done, this operator needs to strafe left and right, looking right there and right there. Thermite is going to go right here, he can stay there, he can go right here, and he can even go right here, and he's going to cut out the reinforcement from the B site, and you basically plant the bomb right in front of the door. After that's done, you pretty much won. Uh, you take back these two guys, and they look at the bomb, Ash is still looking at the B site, Thermite can go right here and look at the stairs, and Thatcher's looking at the outside windows and the ramps to make sure that no defenders escape the building to shoot at his allies. And the fun thing about this strategy is that Thermite can play very aggressively because his only role is to destroy that one wall at the beginning. This would be Thermite's spot and as you can see you can look at the stairs, you can look at ladder room and also the B room to cut out any potential reinforcement or at least slow it down. Just make sure the first thing you do when you get in that room is to destroy the camera on your left. 
This right here is Thatcher's location. All he has to do is to make sure that no defenders go outside and shoot his teammates in the back. So basically look at the ramp on your left, the window in front of you, and the main entrance to your right. This here is the hole I was talking about. Basically using the breaching charges, you can destroy the very top part of these walls. And your role is to cut or slow down the reinforcement coming from the B side. And if Thermite dies or something, you can look into the locker room. This here was taken from an actual ranked match that I played. At one point it was a 2v5, but we managed to bring it back to a 2v2. And as soon as we planted that diffuser, we knew we were gonna win. Fine. We got this Four last operators Good game. job, guys. Good fucking He's job. He's pushing inside. He's fell off. He's at doorway. Not diffusing. Can't see him. Might be diffusing. No, he's not. Good fucking round, guys. Oh. Oh, shit. The other defending positions like the first, the second, and the third floor are a lot easier to attack. And so instead of laying down a complete strategy for each of them, I will give you tips. This here is a very strong and popular repelling spot to attack the third floor. The weakness of this spot is that you can easily get shot from the right side if defenders go outside. So if you plan on using this spot, make sure someone is watching the ramp and the basement door for you. This right here has a lot of potential because you're putting pressure on the enemy team and you're also covering your teammate that is repelling at the same time. So all you have to do is to lay down in the stairs and you can easily see under that barricade. You can also shoot through the wall if they didn't reinforce it and hit the popular right corner of the room on your left. And you know, you won't get a lot of kills from that, but you will deny a lot of campers. Here are some more popular spots that you can deny. You have this one on the left and this one on the right. I would recommend pre-firing these two spots even if your drone didn't make it simply because they are way too popular to ignore. So yeah, just shoot at the same place as me and you should hit them pretty easily. By the way, the best way to practice these wall bangs is to go in a custom game with your buddy and have him stand on the other side of the wall. If you guys are in the same team, you'll see his silhouette and so that way it'll be very clear for you to see where you need to be hitting that wall. Here's another popular spot that you can deny, just make sure you strafe left and right while shooting there because it's not a corner so people won't stand in the exact same position. And also be careful because a camper can return fire quite easily on you and you don't have solid cover nearby. When attacking the first floor, it's very hard to push into that room from the container because there are so many angles and so many crossfire and you have absolutely no cover. I recommend blowing a hole right there or a little bit more to the left and so that way the truck will cover you and the only thing they'll see is your head, your shoulders and your gun. That might seem like a small thing but it's gonna make a hell of a difference because trying to shoot a head that's strafing left and right very quickly is extremely hard with the SMG. Let's now talk about some defending strategies. Here I'm showing you my spawn trap with Jaeger. So at the beginning you have to be very quick. You put two ADS and one reinforcement wall. You don't have time to barricade anything else. It's honestly not a big deal because there's not much to reinforce on this map, especially in the basement. After that, you run to the third floor, you destroy the east window, and you make a hole through the west wall. From there, you're all set. All you have to do is to use the camera that's looking at the north. If you don't see the enemy spawning in the shooting range, that means that they're not there. So you wait six or seven seconds at the west, and if you don't see them, that means they spawned east. If you plan on going outside to shoot the attackers, you do have to be very careful because you're very predictable and you don't have much cover on your side. Also, glass players love to use that roof on the east building, so you will need to crouch walk if you want to go on the ramp. I have to say that this position is extremely annoying to play against and it will make the enemies paranoid, which will slow them down and that'll give you a considerable advantage. Just make sure you don't get greedy and die because if that happens, you just lost all the benefit of this spawn trap. On your way back to the basement, use your razor wires and the stairs, and from there you can defend the sites, or you can roam if you want to. It is very important that at the beginning of the round, you make holes in this wall to connect the locker room and the A room, because it's very hard to defend the A site from the room itself. If for some reason you find yourself defending the first floor, make sure you reinforce this wall and this trapdoor. I see way too many teams overlooking the trapdoor especially, and after the enemy blows a hole through that, it's a nightmare to defend. I like to make these two holes when I'm defending the third floor because it basically forces the enemies to not use those stairs. I mean there's just way too much crossfire going on for them to even consider using them. When defending the third floor, this spot is absolutely amazing. No one will expect you to go outside from there and you can get great shots on enemy shields that are going up the stairs and also enemies that are repelling. This is honestly my favorite spot in the entire map when defending the third floor because for some reason no one looks at it. 
Well, this is it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the format of the video. I mean, I tried to compress the information as much as I could, but I still ended up with a 10 minute video. My next upload will be a smoke guide and I'm sure you guys will like it. Oh, and I'm getting a new mic tomorrow, so the audio quality will be a lot better in the future videos. If you have any questions, ask it in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Because the fact that she has low armor means that she can't fight in tunnel vision types of firefights. So basically, as soon as you start to see the fight slowing down and a no man's land forming, that's a sign that you shouldn't be there. In fact, you want to be the one forcing the enemy to start moving by flanking and knocking holes in the walls and ceilings. For example, this spot is absolutely amazing. No one's going to expect you there and you're gonna have free headshots over free headshots. So if you don't like Glass at first, just keep playing him and try to learn where are the good spots. As soon as your positioning will be down, your effectiveness will follow.